Hey there, community. Welcome to season three of the Providence podcast. I'm Sister Leslie, and I'm so glad you're here. At Godspace, we have all kinds of ways to connect with other people and to grow your spirituality. So be sure to sign up for our newsletter and stay connected with us. Visit godspacecommunity.com and follow us on social media too. Godspace is a ministry of the Sisters of Divine Providence of Kentucky, and you are more than welcome to stay connected with us as well. You can find us at cdpkentucky.org and wherever you find yourself on social media. And now let's get started with our scripture reading and do some reflecting together. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones, when taking their lamps, brought no oil with them. But the wise brought flasks of oil with their lamps. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight there was a cry, Behold, the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise ones replied, No, for there may not be enough for us and you. Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. While they went off to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went into the wedding feast with him. Then the door was locked. Afterwards, the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he said in reply, Amen, I say to you, I do not know you. Therefore, stay awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. This story about the ten virgins is a strange one. And I confess I've often judged the so-called wise virgins as stingy with their oil. The other five need some, and sharing is good, right? As I sit with this story now, though, there's something that feels familiar about the way these five foolish ones ask for the oil. I look again at how the wise women respond to them, and I wonder if they might have some wisdom to offer me, and maybe you too. For reasons I don't understand, these ten women are tasked with waiting up for a bridegroom and lighting his way into a wedding feast. In order to do that, they need an adequate amount of lamp oil. Half of them take this responsibility seriously and prepare well, and half of them flake out. When it's crunch time, the foolish ones turn to the responsible ones and basically ask them to make up for their lack. The wise women say no. They've taken responsibility for themselves, and when others insist that they take responsibility for them too, they refuse. They're not being selfish. They're keeping a boundary. Wise women, indeed. I totally identify with the responsible women, And this story feels a lot like the group project hell I experienced in school. You know what I mean, right? The teacher would assign a project and put us all into groups. And some worked hard and some didn't. Then everyone in the group either got a good grade because of the hardworking students or a bad grade because the slackers dragged everyone down. I was not one to settle for a bad grade, so I would persevere with the other hardworking group members, and we would bring the slackers with us. I have tended to take responsibility for myself, and when someone comes along who's not dependable, 
Hmm. Sometimes I've taken responsibility for them too. I give them all of my oil, figuratively speaking, and then I feel depleted. Even if we all get good grades, though, that's a foolish thing to do. Being wise about boundaries has been kind of a lifelong challenge for me. Sometimes it's because I genuinely want to be generous to other people, but it can also be a people-pleasing thing to do, or the path of least resistance. Sometimes it's easier just to give in and do the thing. However, when I don't protect my boundaries, or when I take responsibility for other people, I'm not taking good care of myself. Also, it's not just about doing it all myself. Even if I have plenty of oil, there's a dark side to being a wise virgin trying to light the way on my own. In our parable, there's not just one bridesmaid carrying all the extra oil. There are five. Together, they complete the thing they're called to do. Asking for help is another form of self-care. Like our wise virgins, I don't expect others to be responsible for me, but I don't have to light up the world on my own, either. These wise women remind me of some other wisdom I found in Brene Brown's podcast, Unlocking Us. I heard it a few years ago, and the wisdom of it has just stayed with me. She talks about cultivating a, quote, strong back, soft front, and wild heart which means standing up for ourselves and showing up as we are, while also staying open and generous to other people. It's cultivating a balance of self-protection and care for others. Here's a quote from Brene Brown, who's quoting Buddhist teacher Roshi Joan Halifax, who's the one who originated this practice. She says, All too often, our so-called strength comes from fear, not love. Instead of having a strong back, many of us have a defended front, shielding a weak spine. If we strengthen our backs, metaphorically speaking, and develop a spine that's flexible but sturdy, then we can risk having a front that's soft and open. How can we give and accept care with strong back, soft front compassion, moving past fear to a place of genuine tenderness? I believe it comes when we can be truly transparent, seeing the world clearly and letting the world see into us. Wow, that is some wisdom. And so it's more than what I do when tasked with a group project. It's about how I am in the world. This practice calls me to belong to myself first and to speak and live my truth, not sacrificing that to please or appease others. I'm responsible for living this way. No one can do it for me, and I can't do this for someone else either. Each of us has to take responsibility for our own spiritual lives. Our wise bridesmaids seem to have strong backs and soft fronts, too. They hold true to their boundaries with their foolish counterparts, but are also generous to the bridegroom. They stay through the night and are prepared to light the way when he arrives. They have a job to do, and they do it. It's not about the other five, or even about the bridegroom. They take responsibility for themselves. Their goal is to enter the feast, and when it's time, they do. Jesus, who's both genuine and generous, someone with a strong back and a soft front, tells this story to let people know that they need to take responsibility for their spiritual lives. No one can do that for us. We each need to be attentive and responsible, open to God, and true to ourselves. If we discern well, 
We'll know whether life circumstances call for generosity or for setting a boundary. So be wise, everyone. Strengthen your back, soften your heart, and be attentive to the presence of God. Amen. So let's continue and maybe even deepen our reflection. With whom do you identify in this story? Are you a wise or foolish bridesmaid? are you with boundaries? Do you tend to err on the side of giving in to other people or being more rigid with boundaries? Which is more challenging for you, having a strong back or a soft front? And which comes more naturally to you? What is God saying to you through this story? Maybe just take a few moments and talk it over with God and see what God has to say. Thanks for listening to the Providence Podcast. I hope you continue to stay connected with God's face and, of course, the Sisters of Divine Providence of Kentucky. As you continue on your faith journey, may you notice all the ways that God cares for you, and may we all take good care of each other.